get your body in position and get your mind in position. You look at the breath so that the mind can look at itself. This is something we often find hard to do. It's so easy to look at other people's behavior. And it's hard to look at our own. But then again, the Buddha said, you don't go to heaven or hell because of other people's behavior. You go, to, you go there because of your own. So you've got to look at your own. Where does it come from? It comes from the mind. All too often the mind is like the eye. The eye can see everything, but it can't see itself. All it can see are reflections of itself. And so in the beginning you have to look at a reflection of the mind. You look at the breath. It's a good barometer for what's going on in the mind. And get you closer and closer to the target, which is your sense of awareness and the things that come out of the awareness. The Buddha calls them asavas, effluence, outflows. They keep churning out, churning out, churning out. And if we don't get some control over them, they be turn into floods. So we're going to turn around and look at where they're coming from. That requires that you pay a lot of attention to what you're doing, a lot of attention to what you're thinking. The more you stay focused on what you're doing, the closer you get to the real problem. It's so easy during the quarantine, to, when we're all living with one another for long periods of time, to know exactly what the other person's faults are, what their habits are. And it's so easy to pass judgment. But you've got to learn how to apply your judging faculties inside. This is why John Lee talks about so much about directed thought and evaluation. You apply it to the breath, but you also apply it to the mind. When the mind isn't willing to settle down, why? And it's not going to tell you right offhand. You've got to poke it. In other words, you've got to give it a task to do, and then it's going to rebel. And when you see it rebel, that's when you get a chance to understand what's, what's lying behind the scenes. So constantly keep referring things inside. That's where the problem is, but that's also where the solution can lie, too. This takes care of two problems at once. One, it makes it a lot easier for us to live with one another. And in terms of our own suffering, we get closer and closer to figure out why we're making ourselves suffer and how we can stop. So keep your gaze focused inside. Keep watch over what's going on in the mind. And even before you put an end to suffering, you find that you cut down on a lot of suffering and a lot of trouble outside. 